Thanks for going out of your way to brighten someone's day. Sometimes just being friendly and kind, man, we all need that. We all need, we all need love. I just want to commend you for uh, uh, our time in worship, just pressing in and expressing your love to our King Jesus. There's no one like Jesus. And I think that's something in my life I want to do more and more and more is just express my love for him every day. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day be four. Yeah, so we love him more and more. So we're glad you're here with us at Faith Christian Outreach in person online. And uh, I, I, I just want to commend you. In, in 2023, our, our theme has been Every Life Matters. So thank you all for how you've invited others here to church. People are being changed. They're being impacted by the word of God, by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here, Just real quick, we looked it up this week. There have been 31 people who have received Jesus Christ into their life as Savior and Lord. Praise and thanks be to God. Now that means that means here, that means at our Fairfield Church, that also means with our kids, with our E3 students. There's also have been uh, 16 people who have rededicated their life to Jesus Christ. So lives are being impacted. 25 people have been baptized in water this year. So let's keep up the good, good work. Two weeks from today is our Evangelism Sunday. So keep that on the forefront of your mind. Not everybody comes on that Sunday, but when they do, hallelujah. All right. God's good. Yeah, again, make sure you have these ready. We're going to look at some scriptures, uh, perhaps fill in a few blanks. I also want to make mention at both Fairfield and here in Mount Pleasant, our salt and light uh, table is out in the foyer. Any of the, event, the events you see in your bulletin or uh, that were on video announcements, please see the Welcome Center. A ton of clipboards at our Welcome Center. But salt and light, get involved. Actively pray for our president, for our leaders, those who are in authority. That's our duty. Hallelujah. Pray for Israel. Amen. And, and be praying about things that God puts on your prayer radar. Okay. But this helps us with that. Thanks for uh, visiting our salt and light table today. I want to get started with a faith confession. All right. Say this with me. Repeat after me, whether it's here, Mount Pleasant, there in, in Fairfield. I am a born again Christian. That means Jesus lives in my spirit. In my spirit. I'm just like Jesus. I'm righteous through Jesus. I am God's beloved in whom he is well pleased. I'm worthy because Christ in me. And because of this, I can walk in his blessings and favor. My ear gate is open. Ready to hear. My eye gate is open. Ready to see and read. And my heart is open, ready to receive. Thanks, Brother Dana, for that. Isn't that great? Pastor Monty and Peggy are away today, so we lift them in prayer. Hi, my name is Gary Lee Van Nias, Associate Pastor. Glad to share God's word with you today. And uh, along these lines of faith that we've been looking at here over the past month. So like breathing air, this love for Jesus is one of the most essential things that we can do as believers. It's so profound for us to express our love to him. And, and likewise, loving him is our faith in God. It's another vital measure for us to live out every single day as on fire, filled with the Holy Spirit, born again believers. Can I get a uh-huh? Over the past month, we're growing in this faith life. And that's the title for today's message. And, and so there, there can be many misconceptions about faith, right? Maybe you've heard expressions like this, blind faith, a leap of faith, keep the faith. Ever hear any of those? Come on, help me out. So, so what is faith in God? Pastor Monty's been teaching us this. We're, we're being drilled on this. We want to grow in this. Is, is faith in God, is it blind? I mean, is it a leap? I mean, can we keep it? So today, uh, who wants to grow in this faith life in Jesus Christ? Absolutely. So here are some great reminders there on your golden page there uh, from God's word for us. Romans 1.17, the second part, part B says, the just shall live by. Absolutely. Second Corinthians 5, 7, we walk or we live by faith and not by sight. Galatians 2.20, the second part of it says, the life I live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and he gave himself for me. 
Heavenly Father, as we, as we look into your word today, may it be like a mirror in our lives. May we, as we look in it, may we see you. May we also see ourselves and show us how we can grow. How not to be stagnant, how not to be lackadaisical, but how to be intent in our faith life with you. To live by faith. And Father, we just thank you and praise you for growth by the power of the Holy Ghost. For the hearing of the word and the doing of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Faith. Faith is, is when you and I trust God with his word. We take God at his word. We believe all he has said and his promises, and we choose to live like it. You see, faith is a choice. Love is a choice. Patience and kindness, all of these things, all these godly characteristics and traits are a choice in our life. Faith is when you're convinced that the Bible is truth. I'll say that again, that the Bible is truth, that it is our worldview. Come on. And it works. The Bible works before even seeing the evidence. True and sincere heart faith in God will not be shaken when it's tested. That faith stands firm on truth, on his word. Come on, hold up your Bible today. Hold it up. Hold it up. Say, this is truth. It brings freedom to my life. So just to keep you in the loop here, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about, number one, the importance of owning your faith in God and then also, two, three, four, is the ABCs of faith. Okay, all that's in your notes. Kind of uh, foundational stuff, all right? But I believe it'll take the fire that's burning big in you and make it even brighter, or more massive. First of all, own it. Own your faith. What does it mean, family, to be an owner? How have you owned something? All right, so think about this definition. What does it mean to be an owner, write down a quick definition uh, from your perspective of what it means to be an owner. It could be very similar for all of us. It could be slightly different. What does it mean to be an owner? Because we're talking about the importance of owning faith in Jesus Christ. I like this definition as you've written yours down. Go ahead and show, show the person next to you just as we're kind of, yep, take a look. Yeah, it's an open book test. Praise God. What does it mean to be an owner? It means to have and to hold as one's own. It means to possess, right? It means to realize it belongs to me, and therefore, since it belongs to me, I have to get to take care of it or steward it. These are all things regarding owning things. Owning things. Owning our faith. Whether you're... Hey, Listen up here, whether you're in middle or high school or you're a college student or you're 103 years old, it's vital for every Christian to own their faith. And a portion of this is a message I've shared with our young people before and Jay High shared, shared with my own sons. We have to own our faith. It's vital. So why is it important for young adults or for people of any age to own their faith? It's important because a thief, everybody say a thief wants to steal your faith in God, his word, and his destiny for your life. It's important for us to have a stronghold, a firm grip, and to own this faith in Christ Jesus. Own this faith in God's word. Own this relationship daily with the Holy Spirit in order to be led by him. A thief wants to steal. People owning faith in God have access, think about this, to the throne. The throne of the king, the throne of the creator of the universe. They have access to his unlimited power. Who does? People of faith. Is that you? Is that you? You're not just people of faith. You're an army of faith. You're mighty warriors. You have an assignment today and every day. Don't neglect. No, don't forget this assignment that you have as people of faith. The gospel assignment. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. John chapter 5, verse 24, Jesus said this. After this, we'll be going to James chapter 1. But this is the gospel of John chapter 5, verse 24. The reference is in your notes. Jesus said this, red letter words for you, church. I tell you the truth. Those who listen, listen to my message and believe 
in God. So listen and believe. Believe in God who sent me have, or I'll use this word, own or possess eternal life. Again, people who listen and believe in God, this message, have our own eternal life. They'll never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death to life. Went to a visitation yesterday. It was a visitation of a believer. This gentleman had received Christ into his life, and his brother looked at me and said, you know, it's a lot different when you know they're a believer. It's completely different. Praise God for his gift of salvation. Praise God for eternal life. Praise God for Jesus Christ. That's why we love him so passionately. Hallelujah. James 1, verses 2 through 4 is where we're, we're going next. But we must believe in God, listen to the message, and own this faith, this eternal life. I will tell you this, and Jesus warned us of this as well, but your faith will be tested. How many of you have had your faith tested in whatever way, shape, or form? Maybe in the past day, 24 hours, maybe in the past week, past year. I think we've all been tested. We're battle tested. That's why we're warriors. Come on. We're soldiers in the Lord's army. We're not wimps. We're not throwing in the towel. We're not digging a hole. And our name isn't Thumper. I don't know. Because our faith will be tested. What can happen? Well, here's James 1, the brother of Jesus, making it plain. When troubles of any kind come your way, because they do come our way, right? Consider it an opportunity, an opportunity for what? Great joy. This is an opportunity to choose joy when you have challenges or troubles. Looking across this room, I know many of you have faced troubles. Knowing those of you in Fairfield, I know you've gone through stuff, and God is seeing you through stuff. Opportunity for great joy. Verse 3, your faith is tested. Your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. Let it grow. When your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect, complete, needing nothing. Another reference to maturity as a believer. Perfect, complete. It's amazing. When my wife says something like, oh, that's perfect. I take it personally. You'll get it. When we face trials and temptations, when we face difficulties, God helps us overcome. And he helps grow us. He helps mature us. He helps us become perfected by him, by the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Hey, character can either grow or it can shrink. So regarding your faith life in Christ today, what's the situation right now? What's the situation today? On a scale of 1 to 10, in your notes, kind of, kind of write that down. How well do you own, do you possess your faith in God? This is you between you and the Holy Spirit right now. Okay, this isn't, this isn't some teacher giving you a grade that you felt you did better in it. Or this isn't you abasing yourself and, and, and bashing yourself in faith. Just be real. Just be real with God on a scale of 1 to 10. How are you doing at owning, possessing uh, your faith in God? 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Why are we doing this? Because I think we need to have times in our life, and, and, and for some, maybe it's daily, but where we evaluate, where we assess things. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says this. Examine yourselves. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Look at your neighbor. Look at them. Smile at them. Say, I'm not testing you. I'm just examining little old me. Yeah, we don't have to judge anybody else. We just examine ourselves. What happens to some folks when they receive Jesus, when they receive his salvation? Think about this. Jesus talked about this in Luke chapter 4, the parable of the sower. What happens to some people? Do all people live on fire for God the rest of their lives? Or do some fall away? You see, the heart is such an important thing. Your heart matters to God. Guard your heart every day with all diligence. From your heart flows the things of life. So guard it. Protect. Where does the seed fall? Is the seed just falling on our minds or on our brains? Is it just falling on our, our bodies? 
for healing? Or, or is it taking deep root in our hearts? You see, we have to nurture the seed of God's word and the gospel in our hearts. That's our responsibility. Guard your heart, the word says. In other words, it's implicated you guard your own heart. Guard that seed in your heart. That was okay for me. I don't know. Some folks, when they receive Jesus, they don't always stick with him. Do some quit? Do some walk away from the faith? Why? Why do some walk away? When? When do people walk away? You see, it's our duty not only to win converts. Jesus said, go make disciples, teaching them to obey. Make disciples, teaching them to obey. So we don't just want people to come to the altar and have a quick drive through experience and get their quarter pound cheeseburger and their fries and their soft drink and leave. We want them to daily have the milk and the bread and the meat of God's word, the hunger and thirst for holiness and, and righteousness. Amen. Think about this as you relate to people, as you raise up people, as you make disciples, because it's, it's not just Pastor Monty's job. It's not just my job. It's all of our jobs. Own our faith. What's the ideal? What should happen in our walk with Jesus? What's the ideal in your family regarding owning faith? What's the ideal in this church family, the body of Christ? What's the ideal in our communities? The ideal is, is 1 Timothy 2, verse 4. And that is this, that none should perish and that all should come to repentance. That none should perish and all come to repentance. That all own their faith. That is what we are an agent or an ambassador for, leading people into the faith life of Jesus Christ. That may be through your workplace. That may be through some club you're in that you go to one evening a week. That may be through your neighborhood. Hallelujah. Praise God when the walls come down in our neighborhoods. I'm going to invite you to turn to Luke chapter 8. We'll be there shortly. You know, that this is the ideal that happens, but I'll tell you this, and, and we all know this is, is, is what we've noticed. Fear creeps into some of society, and fear spreads like a weed. So, people of God, how do we combat fear? I've, I've, seen, I've seen this enemy of fear at work more and more in society and therefore creeping into the church, the body of Christ, fear. How do we combat fear? I believe we combat fear with faith in God and his word. We combat fear with faith. We combat whatever hesitation or whatever procrastination or whatever partial obedience that is happening in our life and God pushing us forward to do something because he's a good shepherd. His rod comforts us. He leads us, right? He's going he's gonna to push us. He's, the Holy Spirit is like a coach inside of you. And our ears need to be open to the voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the good shepherd leading us. So we need to combat this fear, combat pushing things off, and utilize faith, trust, confidence in God today. Everybody say today. You have no other options than faith. No other options. That's our only option. Is fear an option? Yeah. Oh, Lord. I'm so nervous about this. Is that an option? Is it a thought? It can be a thought. Do we have to yield to that thought? Or can we yield the truth? You guys are awesome. We must apply action to that option, that only option of our faith, kinetic faith, faith in action to truly make it valuable, precious, effective. With many other uh, with many of Jesus miracles, he required action and cooperation on the part of the person or the recipient plus their faith action plus faith. This is Luke chapter eight. Are you with me? This is out of the message paraphrase. Everybody doing okay? Okay. Uh, where are you at? You're getting there to Luke chapter 8. Check with your neighbor. Ask if they're on page 1423. <laughs> message paraphrase. We're picking up at about verse 40. It says this. Jesus 
was welcomed by a crowd. They were expecting him. How are you expecting Jesus today? Woo! Tomorrow. Tomorrow, Monday, first day of the work week. Come on, are you expecting Jesus there with you? A man came up, Jairus by name, was president of the meeting place, and Jairus does what? He falls down at Jesus' feet. Oh, man. One day we're going to have the joy of falling down right before Jesus and looking up in his eyes, man. I don't know that they're going to be blue. I don't know that they're going to be brown. I think the Bible says they're going to be like fire. <laughs> and we're going to fall before him like Jairus did. And, and why would Jairus approach Jesus and, and fall before him? He had a need. He had an expectation. He begged him to come to his house because his 12, 12 year old daughter, his only child, was dying. And Jesus went with him, making his way through the crowd, pushing, jostling that crowd. What's interesting about Jesus is we're going to see what happens next. And Jesus was always loving, patient, and kind. He was filled with compassion. So what did he do? He was able to take a time out. Now, I, I don't know that I'm a type A person, but I am, I am a very results-driven person, and I like to get things done, and I'm one of those checklist people. You know what I mean? I have things in my mind for the whole week, things for the day. Any of you like that? It's not a sin. Just be honest. It's okay. All right. God bless you on your list every day. And so if, if Jairus was number one on my list, guess what I would do? Let's get to Jairus' house right now. But is that what Jesus did? Mm-mm. No, in the crowd, verse 43, was a woman who for also 12 years, see, the enemy came and, and did an attack on both of these families and was, was doing it for 12 years, specifically with this lady, not necessarily the little girl. For 12 years had been afflicted with hemorrhages. So she was ceremonially unclean day after day after week and so forth. She spent every penny she had on doctors, but not one was able to help her. Not one doctor. I can't imagine what it was like for this lady to have this issue of blood. Don't want to be there. She slipped in from behind, and what did she do, family? What did she do? She, she reached out and touched him. I just, just not even him. It wasn't like she grabbed his arm. She grabbed his robe. Where was her faith? Her faith was in the presence and the power of God, his ability to deliver her. She thought, if I could just get close, just maybe touch the hem of his garment, right? Isn't this beautiful? You know what happens, right? I don't even have to read it, but I'm going to. I want you to hear it. Faith comes by hearing, and then faith grows by acting upon what we hear. At that very moment, at that very moment, that second right there when she made contact, her hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging stopped. And Jesus said, what did Jesus do? I mean, there's people all around him. He said, who touched me? No one stepped forward. So Peter, Peter's pretty awesome. He said, Master, we've got crowds of people on our hands, dozens, dozens of people touching him. And Jesus insisted, wait, 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 wait. Someone touched me. I felt power discharging from me. She who had the discharge received a discharge from the master. His anointing at that very moment, the anointing of Jesus Christ to restore health to her and heal her. Again, Jesus was one filled with compassion who was patient and took time, even if he had something else on his checklist. I don't think Jesus had a checklist. I, Jesus knew how to flow. I want to I know how to flow better. How about you? Someone touched Jesus intentionally. They, they touched him with faith, with expectation, not accidentally brushing against him. She received from him what she believed for. What are you believing from Jesus today? In your heart, in your home, in your health, whatever it may be. He loves you so much. 
Jesus loves you so much. Can he heal you? Yes, he's able. Can he provide for you? Yes, he's able. Can he rescue and save you or your loved one? Yes, he is able. He is the answer. He is the cure. He is the solution for what you seek. He is able. When the woman realized, verse 47, that she couldn't remain hidden, she knelt trembling. So you have Jairus on his knees. You have this woman on her knees. I don't know what kind of trembling it was. You know, you may think fear. Maybe she was trembling because the anointing was on her. I don't know. Maybe she was trembling because she knew something had changed in her. And she's trembling. She's not sure what to say. Oh. And in front of all the people, what did she do? She blurts out her story and why she touched him and how that same moment she was healed. And Jesus said, daughter, you took a risk trusting me, and now you are healed and whole. Live well and be blessed. And while he was still talking, someone from the leader's house, Jairus's, came up and told him, your daughter died. No need to bother the teacher now. Jesus overheard what was said, and, and Jesus is like, Jesus isn't in fear. Jesus isn't struggling. Jesus is confident in the Father. He's confident in being the Son of God, and he said, don't be upset. Just trust me. Don't be upset, family. Just trust me, Jesus is saying you, to you today, and everything will be all right. All right. Everything going to be all right. Jesus was speaking faith. The New King James says, do not be afraid, only believe, and, and she will be made well. Jesus said, trust me and everything, everything will be all right. And going in that house, he wouldn't let anyone enter with him except for Peter, John, and James, and the child's parents. And everyone was crying, carrying on over her. And Jesus said, don't cry. She didn't die. She's sleeping. What they do, they laughed at him because they knew she was dead. And Jesus gripping her hand. Woo. See, the lady made contact with his robe. Jesus grabs this little girl's hand. He said, my dear child, get up. He didn't do a long five or ten minute prayer. Just grabbed her hand and said, little child, get up. She was up in an instant and up and breathing again. And he told them to give her something to eat. Sometimes we just need a, something to eat, too. And her parents were ecstatic. Jesus warned them to keep quiet. Don't tell a soul what happened here in the room. PowerPoint number two is that Jesus said, and he's saying it to you today, only believe, just trust me. Only believe, just trust me. Notice the faith of the woman who touched Jesus took action and received the healing, the anointing of the healer. What about the faith of Jairus? Only believe, just trust me. Trust, it's one of the easiest things for us to do, right? There's two things. At some point, we learn the hard way that we can't trust everyone. Only a very select group of people. Secondly, though, at some point, we learn that we must trust. We must trust in God. We must have faith and trust in God and that they work hand in hand in our, our walk as believers. Faith is not this. Faith is not worry. It's not doubt. It's not fear. It's not wavering. That's not faith. That's fear. Faith life is this. Faith life is believing. It's expecting. It's being fully persuaded. It's being completely con convinced. Fill in this blank. Faith life is a life style a daily lifestyle it's trusting completely and it's walking in love the love of god in who in god in what his word when all ways so jairus and this woman are models for these abcs of faith and so i'm going to go pretty quickly on these abcs of faith 
All right, this is the back side of your page. Letter A is ask. Ask. You know, it's a godly thing to ask God. What did Jairus do? Jairus asked Jesus for help. When we humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord, the word of God says he will lift us up. Sometimes we just have to be humble enough to ask for the help of the father. Sometimes we need to ask for the help of a brother or sister in the Lord. It's okay to ask each other for help. It's pretty wise to. Sometimes it's not easy to because of that thing called pride or ego. Ask. You see in your notes, James 1. Five and six, this is a contemporary English. Asking in faith is an essential element of prayer. Asking is praying, I believe. Prayer is conversation with God. All of our conversation, I don't believe, should be about asking, but some of it can be. I said some of our prayer time with God can be asking. And so James 1, verses 5 through 6 in the CEV says, If any of you need wisdom, you should ask God. And it will be given to you. God is generous and won't correct you for asking. When you ask for something, you must have faith and not doubt. Is this regarding wisdom only, do you think, when James is writing this? You think we can ask for wisdom the same way we can ask for healing? The same way we can ask for guidance? The same way we can ask for protection? The same way we can ask uh, for, for love and grace to abound? Do you think... Yeah, we, but we do need to ask. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, ask it shall be given, seek you'll find, knock, doors will be open. Everyone, everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. To him who knocks, he is the door. And he makes a way. Ask. Glory to God. We simply humble ourselves before the Lord and trust him to do his mighty thing, and that is help us. That is help us trust, totally rely upon the Savior today and every day. These are the ABCs of faith. The letter A family is? Yeah, the letter B is believe. Believe in the one he has sent. Believe in the one he has sent. John chapter 6, they said to Christ, what shall we do that we may work the works of Jesus? How many of you want to do the works of Jesus while you're breathing air on this planet? We all do. Jesus answered, this is the work of God, God the Father, that you believe him, the Son, and he whom the Father has sent. The work of The believer is believing or having faith. Our number one job, Jesus is saying here, is have faith. Have faith. Work at believing. Work at it. And I give you a list there of of ways to work at it. So I don't have time to cover, cover it, but it's so crucial with God's word, how to esteem God's word and make it a priority. That's how we work our faith. Let's move on to A means to ask. B means and C means to confess confess hey we're moving right along you guys are doing a great job hebrews 10 23 says this let us hold fast to our confession our confession of faith our hope without wavering because he who promised is faithful philippians 2 11, this is also in your notes at the name of jesus every knee shall bow every tongue confess what Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Confession is such a vital part of our life. Confessing and speaking God's word. Speaking by faith, not doubt, not loss. When you confess the name of Jesus as Lord as we were during our time of worship and praise, sealing the deal in prayer, great things were happening in our midst. Great things are happening in our midst. Great things are happening in your life. We ask, we believe, we confess, and letter D, do. Do God's word. Be a doer of God's word. Do what it says. True or false, faith alone is all you need as a believer. That's false. There's more to it than just believing. Faith by itself, if it doesn't have works, James says, is dead. 
I remind you how we started out, Galatians 5, 6. Faith works by love. We make it our aim to please God. Faith pleases God. Love pleases God. So we're doers of his word in these ways. And I, I apologize for not managing time a little bit better. But I trust this is helpful. It's an arsenal. ABCs of faith. Own your faith, family. Let's not flounder. This is our time, our season to rise up as warriors, as soldiers of the cross, as children of the light. Hallelujah. Praise God. Here in Mount Pleasant, there in Fairfield, or those of you joining us online, the greatest thing we can do with faith is trust in Jesus. There's a hymn that says, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word." Have you placed your trust in Jesus? I remember a few years back driving down the freeway and someone, some Christian, you know, artist (laughs) had a spray can and they were putting all over signs, T-R-U-S-T-J-E-S-U-S. Sometimes on overpasses, you know what I'm saying? They're saying, trust Jesus. (laughs) They want to get the word out. I'm not saying, hey, I'm not promoting graffiti, okay? I'm just saying, as we wrap up our service today, the question is, have you placed your trust and your faith in Jesus Christ and the power of his death, burial, and resurrection? Do you know him as Savior, and does he know you as one who works at faith? I know many of you have done this. I'm going to invite our prayer team up right now, and our ushers are going to the doors right now. But by a raising of your hand, if you want to put your trust in Jesus, if you came here today expecting something from God and maybe you're going through something and and you know that he is the source and the resource for your deliverance or your freedom or your victory. Have you put your trust in him? Are you ready to do that today? Many of you have. If you haven't, lift your hand to indicate, I want to pray. I want to confess Jesus. I want to receive him as my Lord, be forgiven of my sins, and have my name written in the Lamb's book of life. To have this eternal life insurance policy, knowing that when I breathe my last breath here on earth, I'm going to live in heaven and eternity forever. That's the promise. And maybe that won't be the way you go. Maybe we'll all defy gravity and he'll catch us up to meet him in the air maybe that's the rapture of the church are you ready for that day because things keep accelerating here on planet earth know the signs beware are you ready anybody at that call to receive jesus christ as lord you've never received him today or maybe you know you have but you've been like lollygagging is what one of my coaches would have called it you've been out doing your own thing messing around had your back turned to God, and you know you need to face him and seek his face. You want to get back right with Jesus. Anybody here today to rededicate your life to the Lord? Anybody there in Fairfield? Brother Dylan is up front, and he'll be glad to talk and pray with you as well as the prayer team there in Fairfield. I'm going to invite you all to stand to your feet. Thank you so much for paying close attention, for following along. I hope that was helpful to you today. We trust that it is. We want to send you out with a blessing, okay? Two things. Own your faith. If you're not stewarding your faith in God and you're slacking off, get with it. This is, these are no times to be playing games with God. That's just lovingly firm. Also, work those ABCs. There's more than just the D, E, and F. You can, you can add to the alphabet. But do it all for his glory. Amen. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we thank you for this time to come into this house, to magnify your name and worship you, to express our love to you. Jesus, we love you. Heavenly Father, we love you because you first loved us. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for us. We're so grateful that you were raised back from life and that you raised up this little girl that we read about in the Bible and that you're raising us up. I thank you for breathing your life into people, into their health, into their homes, into their circumstances. New life in Christ. We declare it by faith. Hallelujah. We declare the air and the breath that you have, the pneuma of your spirit at work, alive and well, through the lives of these precious ones gathered here. Hallelujah. We are your people, and we want to do what you've called us to do. Thank you for the privilege of possessing faith in Jesus Christ today and every day. And I speak safety, protection, blessing. May your peace, your power, your provision be with and upon your people, and all your promises be yes and amen unto them in Jesus' name. If you agree with that, shout amen.